Services Business and Economy Network. Hello, viewers. Glad to know you are watching your program. Those of you watching us in Fireway Abuja, Port Harcourt, Elore, Kano, Kaduna, Sokoto. Those of you watching us in South Africa, Ghana, London. Those of you watching via the internet channels. I want to say thank you so very much. This is your program. It is our program. It is Business and Economy Network. My name is Steven Peter Moche. Let me ask this question. Have you ever sat down to ask why is it that you have people who are more successful in life? These are the stories of Nigerian companies and CEOs of various Nigerian companies that are doing very well want to showcase today. For company, for company spotlight, if you like, we have the COO, otherwise Chief Operating Officer of Union Auto Parts Manufacturing Limited, a subsidiary of the Beto Group. And not left out for company in focus, we have a car manufacturing, truck manufacturing, if you like. Stair Nigerian Limited, the CEO is on the block today. And for special reports, we have the Chairman Chief Executive Officer of Asman Airline Limited, otherwise the Asman Group. Well, this company, they have actually pride themselves in doing so much to enhance the Nigerian economy. Otherwise, I call people like this, the economic builders. Relax, brace yourself up and hear what they have to say and what is making their company very thick. I'll be back after this time out. Union Auto Parts Manufacturing Company Limited is a member of Ibeto Group of Companies. The company started with the manufacturing of dry charge batteries of all automotive, including generators. In order to survive the harsh manufacturing conditions in the year 2007, which forced most major industry players out of business, Union Auto Parts Company started a new plant that is fully maintenance-free batteries, the first battery manufacturing company in the whole of West Africa. Furthermore, in 2014, the team took up another green field project to do recycling of lead that will generate 1,800 metric tons and 21,000 metric tons monthly and yearly respectively. Also plan to export up to 1,600 metric tons monthly in order to generate a good revenue for the company and to contribute to the development of the economy. Union Auto Part is a member company of Ibeto Group of Companies which has established in uh, 1987, we started manufacturing dry charge batteries of all the ranges starting from uh, 35 ampere hours to 150 ampere hours for all automotives including generators. Um, then in the year 2007, uh, we started a um, new plant that is maintenance free, fully maintenance free batteries, completely maintenance free batteries, which was the first battery manufacturing company in all of West Africa. We are the only battery manufacturing company which has survived in Nigeria with the horse manufacturing condition in Nigeria. The most of the big players like Exide, Wartha, Sonnenstein, they have closed down their operations much earlier than a decade. This is mainly because of the commitment and the determination of our chairman, Dr. Ibeto to make this company a viable company in Nigeria. Therefore, in 2007, he has invested and brought a new technology uh, which is completely maintenance free batteries uh, and which was one of the first battery manufacturing company in all of Africa. Uh, further, in year 2014, last year, he wanted to invest and modernize this plant, 
modernize the whole plant and to improve the quality and also to give a new look to our product so that the Nigerian they accept our product and they like the product the look of the product the appearance of the product and the quality of the product uh, along with we have started a project a greenfield project that is lead recycling plant a rotary re lead recycling plant in umuzu so that will generate 1800 metric tons of lead in a month so talk about um, 21000 metric tons of lead in a year so out of which we are planning to export 1600 metric tons per month which will generate a good revenue um, uh, forex also which will improve the economy of the of this country uh, why I'm calling this is the greenfield project because the used disposed batteries which is hazardous so we collect those batteries the scab batteries we recycle it with a state of art and we reuse it and remaining we export it due to the importance of quality products and services Union Auto Part team acquired ISO and other certifications for their products, thereby making them up to standard in the market. We have already acquired SON's NIS certificate from the SON, that is a quality certificate we acquired from SON. So that means our quality is certified by local government and also we always ensure that our quality is the prime motto so there are two things in batteries the important part of when you talk about quality there are two aspects which comes one is the cca the cold cranking current and second part is the life any customer who buys battery to start his car whenever he wants to start his car easily it should start one kick it should start that's what a customer expects from the battery the second thing life okay he fits this battery under his bonnet and he forgets for two years we give we give give one year warranty but we assure our battery our product lasts for two years Stern Nigeria Limited was established in the late 70s and commenced business operations immediately in partnership of Stern Australia with a 100% interest share which was shared in order of 35%, 40% and 25%. Stern Australia, Federal Government of Nigeria and other northeastern states respectively. The company was principally set up as an assembly plant. Initially, the plant has the capacity to produce on a single shift basis. 5,000 tractors, 8,000 trucks, and 5,000 units of buses. This means that the plant even has the capacity to double the production depending on the demand. From 1979 to 1990, the company operated successfully until the structural adjustment program struck the automotive industry in Nigeria, which affected badly the cost of bringing in raw materials as a result of naira depreciation and as well paved way for the importation of second-hand vehicles, in turn robbed of patronage for Stern Nigeria Limited. Following the diverse of the foreign partners, the federal government of Nigeria took over their shares. The operation became epileptic. This then led to the, the privatization of the plant in the year 2006-2007. Um, Stern Nigeria Limited was um, established in 1979 and commenced operations in 1979 by the federal military government then in partnership with their push of austria the federal government has at five percent stake 
and the Steyr Austria had 40 percent, totaling 75, with a minority interest of 25 from the then northeastern states, which currently are about six of them. We are talking of Bauchi, Gombe, Adamawa, Taraba, Yobe, Borno, and Plateau and Nasara states as other shareholders. The company principally set off uh, is an assembly plant. It produces and assembles a wide range of products, ranging from tractors, principally tractors, light military and civilian trucks, commercial buses, tricycles, motorcycles, etc., etc., and as well as uh, sorry, agricultural implements, as it were. The plant at initial um, state had the capacity to produce 5,000 tractors per annum, 5,000 units of buses per annum, 8,000 units of trucks per annum, motorcycles and tricycles, 10,000 units on a single shift basis. What this means is that the, the, the plan even has the capacity to double this install capacity depending on, on demand. The plant operated successfully from 1979 up to about in the late 90s when problems, economic policies of government affected the operations of the company. If you recall, sometime in the uh, 80s, the structural ad uh, adjustment programs adversely affected operations of uh, manufacturing companies in Nigeria, not just the automobiles. And you recall that it's not just there that was established in that period. There are some uh, our other colleagues in Kaduna, Pan, in Lagos, I'm, I'm in Lagos, that is Vaughan, that is also in Ibadan, Leyland. Then we have Anamco in, in Enugu. That structural adjustment pro, uh, program affected the capacity of these plants to bring, in, to bring in their raw materials, principally SKDs. Because at that time, the depreciation of the Nera was devalued and it made it more expensive for them to bring in these SKDs. And also, it paved way room for all sorts of second hand vehicles to be brought in into the country, which affected the capacity, which affected patronage. So, with these problems, along with others, gradually, gradually led to the decline of the automobile sector, particularly the assembly plants to the extent which now made the initial foreign technical partners to divest. They divested in the 90s. So when they divested, government now took over their own share. Federal government took over the share to now own 75% of the of stair. It continued like that and it was epileptic, moral ban. Today they produced, tomorrow they closed down until the government decided to privatize the plant, the, the company. So in 2006, 2007, particularly 2006, the plan was set for privatization and it was successfully privatized in 2007 by the Bureau for Public Enterprises. It was then that we came on board. Came on board with the hope that we will now structure the company, turn it around in order to take advantage of the numerous uh, business challenges that we are facing. But you see, unfortunately, the business challenges then had not really dramatically changed because we faced and we're still faced with unfair competition, very high tariff um, regime, which affected our ability to remain competitive in the face of uh, cheaper products, lower quality products that were being brought from Asia and along from other parts of the world, which affected our, cap our capacity to produce. So that is where we have been in. That is the challenges we've been facing. But you see, we still remain, we, we are still alive. For that is what the engineers say, the factory is alive. It's alive and kicking, hoping that um, we're changing in policy, we're changing the business environment, other process, we'll take advantage of that and, and move forward. So that is in a nutshell, what's there, who we are. Still came on board with a durable, strong and worldwide brand in the 70s as such, their customers of years to years till date still believe and talks about the quality of the Stair Nigeria product. Vehicles manufactured by Stair can last for 50 years, though in recent times the operation of Stair has gone low 
but the firm still enjoys a high level of goodwill, which is as a result of their durable and long-lasting product. The clientele base of STEER is basically the government, its agencies, and as well as individuals. Yeah, basically, you see, um, when STEER started in the 70s, it came with a very, very strong brand. The STEER brand is a worldwide brand. Very strong, very durable. In fact, if you meet the customers of yesteryears, they still talk about how strong the steer vehicles are, how strong the tractors are. Because a typical steer tractor, for instance, can last like 50 years, 50 years with proper maintenance. If you move around Edo Delta, those trucks that carry the locks from wood, they are steer trucks. And those are the steer trucks of the 70s, and they're still kicking. You could see why I'm saying that it's a very, very strong brand. And because of that, because of that singular act of that strength of its brand, that is what has kept the stair going. Because despite the fact that we are not operating at reasonable capacity, anywhere you meet, you say you are stair, it reminds people they become mm, nostalgic mm, about the stair. So that gives us hope that yes, whatever happens will not allow this outfit to 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 go under. Basically, the clientele base of STEER, of course, are, are, are of government, government and its agencies, both federal, state, and local governments. Then, of course, we have individuals, cooperatives, as the case may be. But basically, the bulk of our customers, cost, bulk of the customer base comes from the public sector, federal, state, and local governments. That's who, those are the ones we service. But uh, recently, we have attempted to to go to the, the retail, particularly in terms of the tricycle, as it were, we get um, other at the lower end of the market. But basically, the, the generally, you know, um, it has become a generic problem. Mm? The power yeah. that is number one, because we don't need to overflow the issue of the power issue. That one is is a national problem, which of course um, the government has invested a lot. The federal government has done a lot for us for the sector with its recent privatization. We hope that there's going to be some improved, uh, improvement in the power supply. The, uh, the, uh, the other problem that we face basically is sustained patronage. Sustained patronage. Because without the patronage, there's no way the products you put on ground hmm, can be disposed of. You cannot raise revenues, you cannot make sales without the sustained patronage. You have patronage, but you need it on a sustainable basis. And of course, prior to the recent um, enactment of the Nigerian automotive um, policy by the federal government sometime last year, we had faced serious issue of uh, the tariff regime. Because it was a situation whereby we had to compete with others who bring in our similar products at the same rate of um, tariff, which was which made it very, very uncompetitive for us. Why do I say that? We as plant, we, we bring in our CKDs at the same rate with somebody who brings in finished finish products. We, you pay virtually the same rate. It does not make sense. The one that brings in the finished product virtually has little or no overhead. We are an assembly plant. We bring in our SKDs, we pay the same um, duties, while we also have to maintain our plant, we have to maintain our staff, we have to maintain all other things that will ensure the production, the assembly and production of this. At the end of the day, all these costs are added to the, to the final price of the, the product. And by the time you do this, you become, your prices tend to be higher than the imported ones. So this makes you uh, uncompetitive and pushes you out of business.
Asma Air Services is a limited liability company registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission in 2010 with the sole objective to carry out air transportation business, both domestic and international operation. The firm is all indigenous. Asma Air Services presently cuts across Yola, Kaduna, Kano, Lagos, Abuja and Sokoto while plans for the services to spread to other states is in progress. Adman, Adman Air Services Nigeria Limited is a limited liability company which was uh, registered with the Corporate Affairs in 2010 uh, with the sole objective of carrying out air transportation business was domestic and international operation. The company is wholly owned by Nigerians with my humble self as president. Although we started operation in May 2014, uh, we, are, we are daily flying in and out of Abuja, Kano, Kaduna, Lagos, Yola and Sokoto Airport. We are planning to acquire more aircraft to expand our operation to Opatakot, Inugu, Kalaba, KB, Katina, Jos, Boch, and the other places. The firm has qualified engineers owned and abroad, dedicated workers, and competent pilots. The Asma brand is known for safety, training, and retraining of staff. You see, Adman Air Services is having modern aircraft in its plate which are maintained by qualified engineers at home and abroad. We in Azman Air have competent pilots who are well known in terms of safety and for, for, for professions. We always give priority to routine training and retraining for our crew to ensure maximum safety and competency for the ground staff, we, have, we, have, we, we give them all needed training and require tools for the operation and ensure safe and smooth operation as you know. Safety of flight always begins on ground. At ASMA, special attention is given to students in the sense that airfares are subsidized for them. The ASMA group has over 5 million persons under its employment list, of which most of its employees are Nigerians. You see, I think even this uh, coming Friday, we have students, they came here kind of occasions. They are going back to Lagos. So we subsidize the fare we give students. There was a time we carried about 90 students from Yola to Lagos. We subsidize the fare for students. You see, always when we calculate our operational cost, we don't mind to get profit for the student. So we just give them, let them come and fly at man. You see, uh, we have a large Nigerians and all, almost our employers are Nigerians. Both Adman Air and Adman Oil and Gas. It is just a few which they are foreigners. But we give a lot of people. I, I employ a lot of Nigerians in my industry, in my company. If I told you how many, how many employees I have in my company, you can surprise. You see, in the Adman Air Services, I have about uh, 700 people employed in Adman Air Services. In oil and gas, I have about 5 million because I have a lot of filling stations across all the northern part in the Nigeria. I employ a lot of people in oil and gas. Well, 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 if you are this way, time will permit us. I want to say thank you so very much to all of you, wherever you have watched this program. 
for your mails, your phone calls, and your encouragement. More importantly, some of you who have called us, those of you in Port Harcourt, those of you in Abuja, those of you in Asaba, those of you even here in Lagos who have called to criticize. Your criticism is to make us serve you much more better. I want to say thank you so very much. You are a mirror, and we are here to serve you much more better. Well, don't forget, tomorrow is election. Please, let us pray for our leaders. Be peaceful. Avoid violence. Don't allow anybody to instigate you or to make you do something that is off your will. Please and please be careful. Always remember this. Think of what you can do to make Nigeria great and not for us to pull down Nigeria. I'll be with you again. Same time next week. God's willing. Stay blessed.